Hello. Back again. Okay, I wanted to talk about intuition. And and um, obviously, if you're reading tarot cards, you're going to be thinking about intuition, psychic awareness, whatever you want to call it, and how the cards are supposed to spark that and um, and how you can develop it. You can't learn that in a book, really. You can get ideas. So I thought I would go over what worked for me and how I became aware of my intuition and the things that I was doing to get there. And it makes sense now that um, I'm older and I could look at that and I could put things together and start connecting the dots and say, okay, this is why I think we, we could spark our intuition. A lot of my readings are using my imagination, getting innovative about things. And there's not any intuition in them or very little. And then I be, I don't really force intuition to come to me. I don't think you can. But when it does come, and it does come in readings, I let it come to me. So I can give good counsel, good advice looking at tarot cards. And um, there might not be any really, there might be hunches, there might be some ideas, things like that. But as far as intuitive insight, a lot of them don't have that. When it is there, it is just something I feel I know. And I'll give you a good example of that and how that works. I just did a reading this month. It's a good example. That we're, we were discussing something. I'm not going to go into the details of the reading. But during the course of the reading, I asked this long shot idea. Could this area be connected with this part of your situation. In other words, could this over here help you achieve this over here, what we're trying to achieve? Is there a connection in some way of this? Like I said, I don't, I don't want to go into detail. And the person I was reading said, no, there's no way. You know, there's, there's, they're, they're not um, related in any way at all. I said, okay, I just was asking, you know, just maybe you never know, you know, and, uh, and that person was fine with that, you know, and, um, and so we looked at it in a different way and things went along fine and um, the reading was good, but um, I kept on feeling that there was a connection between this other area that had nothing to do with what we were looking into and it really didn't make much sense although it would be possible. And uh, I said to him, I said to him during the reading, I said to that person, I said, uh, if it does happen, you got to let me know. He says, absolutely, I will. You know. And um, it might not happen, but during the rest of the day, looking at things I was doing that day, whenever I thought of that reading, I was thinking that's going to happen. And I'm not trying to think about it. I'm just thinking, well, yeah, that really, I know that this is going to happen. And I'm like, wait a minute. No, he said, no. And I'd be thinking later on, I'm thinking, this is going to happen. This is going to be connected with that. And, and um, But it was no. The person said no. And um, so I just knew it would. And I, I, And that's how intuition sort of works. You just know something. I still feel that this is a long shot situation that I was looking at, but I do feel it's going to happen. And um, I'll, I'll get a confirmation if it does, because just the fact that I brought it up, if it does happen, this person will contact me. And that happens a lot. You'll have people call, come up to you later on and say, you know, you said this. And I said, there's no way. And it happened that way. And that's, because you look at it with common sense and it wouldn't make sense to be that way. But things like that happen in life. And uh, so to intuitively know that, just know it without thinking about knowing it. Just that uh, just what's going to happen, I feel. you know, I'm not thinking about what, what's going to happen. I just know when I look at that situation, I'm thinking, well, this is what's going to happen. That's intuition. 
And there's a fine line between that and guessing. Guessing, you're making an attempt. You're putting an effort into knowing something one way or the other. Intuition, if it's done the way I do it, it comes to me. It'll tell me this is what's going to be. I'm not thinking about what's going to happen here. It's telling me this is what's going to happen. And that's the difference with me. But it's also a confirmation. It's also a confirmation to me that this is probably um, some type of insight that we just can't explain. And it probably will happen. So it's not uncommon, like I said, to have people come to you later on and say, you said this and it did happen that way. That's intuition. I, again, a lot of my readings don't really have that in there. But I'm putting myself in a state of mind during the reading, welcoming anything like that to come. I'm not forcing it. But if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. The possibilities of it coming there are there, though. And lots of times it's not important to be there. I've done very good readings without any intuition in them at all. Just using my imagination. What I'm still using is the right side of the mind. So if you wanted to develop your intuition, you have to learn to use that right side of the mind. Our everyday affairs your job, your routine, doesn't use that. So we're never using that, that side. So you have to find ways to start using it. The tarot is a good way, because the tarot does use that side of the mind. A tarot is a good way to start using that. And um, the more you use it, the more you're going to develop it the more you're going to recognize intuition and intuitive insight of some type coming to you, you'll recognize it because you're familiar with what that knowledge is like in your mind. So you get familiar with the insights, that feeling. If you try to force it, it won't come. Like you see a fish in the water, you try to grab it with your hand, it ain't going to come to you. You're going to chase away. It's going to go away from you. So now you're thinking. So it has to come to you. And in order for it to come to you, you can't be searching for it. You could put yourself in a situation that welcomes it to come to you. And uh, this is what works for me. And like I said, it, it, readings will spark that. So if you're reading tarot cards, you're going to be smart. You're using that right side of the mind. What do you want to call it? Imagination, intuition, whatever. You're using this, the, the sources. Those Both of those sources come from the same side. So if you're just using the right side of the mind, you're, to, you're developing that intuitive side. That's the creative side of the mind as well. So anything you do creative, art or anything, crafts, anything like that would be writing would, would help because that's when you're using that part of the mind. Getting up, getting ready for work, driving to work, doing your job. They're good to have those things in your life, but you can't, if that's all you're doing, you're not using that intuitive side of your mind. So to have certain times of the week or that you can get out of that left brain thinking routine and get into your right brain thinking is good. Reading cards helps that. And I know a lot of readers. And so the cards don't really have any power to them. It's what you're doing with the cards that develops the power. I know a lot of readers, including Linda, who started out reading cards and then later on they say you know what I don't need these cards anymore 
and they'll just become psychics. And you sit across from them and they'll tell you things, a lot of things about you that she has no way of knowing, or this person, this reader would have no way of knowing. They're just psychic now. And they're not using the cards at all. Me, I like using the cards. I'll always use the cards. It's just easier for me that way. It's just me. So I'll never really sit there and say I'm a, I'm a psychic. And you just sit there and I'm just sitting there with nothing. And I'll start telling you things. If you do that, you'll get more, you'll get more business. I, I don't like doing it. I like to have the, the cards in front of me. This is my business right here. <laughs> and uh, and that's just me. And that works too, you know. So I mean, but um, I do know a lot of readers who used to read cards, and after a while, because they developed that side of the mind, they don't use them anymore. They don't need them. So the cards really don't have the power in them. It's what you're doing with them that develops your mind to get this insight. There's no magic in the cards. It's in you. And there are, there are good ways to, um, to start looking at things um, or get out of the routine of the left brain thinking. I would imagine 3,000 years ago, we were very intuitive people. Because we're not, we built a left brain world around us now. It's a wonderful place. There's a lot of wonderful things. Um, YouTube's one of them. <laughs> and uh, but we're really in there with that left brain. And to get out of it is um, is good to do. So if you can find things you can do. On days you're not working, this what what I used to do. I used to have a three day weekend, every weekend, and um, I work four days a week. So when I was working like that, I would um, in the morning on those days off, I would get a cup of coffee and I would go take a walk in the park down the street, or I would uh, there was a couple places that I would go involving nature getting out of my regular routine everyday world and just thinking about things that in a different way that helped me a lot that helped also i would do is i would paint pictures at night that helped my intuition one of the easiest ways you can do to, to one of the easiest things you can do to develop your intuition is um, recognize your dreams, pay attention to your dreams. And a lot of people say, well, I don't dream. Everybody dreams. You're just thinking when you're dreaming. And your, th your thoughts are, with, with dreams are cool because your thoughts turn into like movies, you know. <laughs> and you can really get to a point where if you say, I don't, you know, if, if you say, well, I don't, I don't, I don't have, I don't dream. Tell yourself at night before you go to sleep. Tell yourself, I'm going to remember my dreams. Have a journal by you. Uh, here's an old journal of mine. This is from the 80s, this thing. 1990. I got dates in here. 19, 1990s. 1990, 91. And I didn't, I, and I recorded my dreams in here. I got a lot of these things around. And, um, I don't really do that much anymore with that, but I still enjoy my dreams. And if you tell yourself at night, I'm going to remember, you're, you're laying there, you're going to go fall asleep, and you're saying, I'm going to remember my dreams. You watch, in the middle of the night, you'll wake up with a dream. And don't worry about analyzing them. Just, rec just record them. You don't have to figure out what they're trying to mean or that, something like that. No, just enjoy them and appreciate them. Um, there's no, there's no reason to analyze the dreams. Just appreciate them. Pay attention to them. See what they have to say to you. We toss and turn in, in our night. And um, as you're tossing and turning, you're waking up a little bit. And if you tell yourself, I'm going to remember my dreams, as you're waking up just a little bit, think, oh, I just had a dream. I, okay. And 
you take that journal by your bedside and you write down some keywords about that dream. Look at the clock, 2 a.m. or whatever it is. Put the date and the year because these last a long time. And um, then go back to sleep. And in the morning when you're having your coffee, look at that journal and look at that, what you wrote and try to recall that dream. If you want to look at the at, uh, the parts of your mind like the tarot, you can look at the magician and the high priestess. I look at the magician as consciousness. And I look at the high priestess as uh, subconscious. So the magician is your facts, your, your learned knowledge. And uh, the high priestess is your possibilities and your mystery. And I look at that as the, that side of your mind, that high priestess side, the subconscious or the right-brained. I'd like to think of them really as the right-brained, not subconscious. But they might be the same type of connection there. I'm not too sure. But I look at that side as a very shy part of you, at least in your everyday affairs it is. And and so if you let yourself you tell you that side, you say, I'm willing to listen to what you got to say if you want to talk to me. You'll start to remember more dreams at night or during the week, more frequency of that happening to you. You'll have a dream to look at the next morning and think about it. And you don't, and and then and you'll also um, it'll start talking to you during your waking state too. So pretty soon it won't shut up. So um, just let that side know I'm, I'm willing to listen to you if you want to talk. That's what you're doing. We're really stuck in our left brain thinking, and and the, the intuition comes from the right brain. Your imagination and your intuition are very close to each other. So it's just a matter of developing it and de and also recognizing it's there. And if you think differently, you'll start to see differently. And when you're in your left brain all the time, you think, well, I'm not intuitive. I can't do this. I can't remember this. I, I'm not going to know this stuff. That's because you're talking from the left side. That's the magician talking. That high priestess is very shy. <laughs> I'll let her talk. And you will get to a point. I actually have written as many as five dreams in one night. And you say, well, how do you go to see how kind of a sleep is that? You're going to be tired the next day. No, you're just up for maybe five minutes writing. And you go back to sleep. And you and put the time of the night down, too. Because your REM cycle is about an hour and 15 minutes apart. Somewhere around there. So if you have a dream at midnight, your next dream will be 1.15. Next dream will be 2.30. So let's say you write a dream at midnight. And then you write another dream at 2.30. You know you missed your 1.15. It was there, but you missed it. You just forgot. You didn't remember it. Those types of things will get that routine to you. Maybe not the exact times in the night, but that pattern of space of an hour and 15 minutes apart will become that. So you start to get to know this part of your mind that you never really thought about before. And that's where your intuition is. And do tarot card readings help that? Yes, they do. You're going to know it in the beginning by reading books on tarot cards? No. But you're going to start using it. And so your readings will be, uh, readings are a combination of imagination and intuition. Getting innovative about something and using your intuition. The more you do it, the more that intuition is going to start coming into your readings. Because they're both the same part of your mind. We all have the ability to be intuition, intuitive. And other things can start happening with you. You might start having out-of-body experiences. You might start seeing things around on the street, uh, not walking down the street. You might start to develop clairvoyance because you're using that side of the mind. So it's there. 
and um, it's just a matter of using it. So getting creative, artsy, poetry, art, music, writing music, whatever you, whatever you, sculpting, anything that gets you creative using that part of the mind, use it. It's there for you if you want to use it and use it. And if you're using that, you're going to start developing your intuition as well. Getting out of the left brain. Lots of your life has to be left brain. You have jobs and you have things you do that are depending on that. <laughs> you can't go to work. And, how come you didn't do this? It was, well, I had a dream. I shouldn't. Something told me not to do my job today. <laughs> the boss will look at you like you're wackadoo. But um, so there are parts, some, you know, you have that world. We live in there. You have to have that rational thinking thing going on. But when you have play, space in your rest of your life, outside of your work, try to use that uh, a spur, certain time of the day. Mornings were good for me for that. And um, and also when you go to sleep at night, think of your, um, tell yourself, I'm going to remember my dreams. You will start to remember them more. We all dream. I tell you, I get to a point sometimes where I just look forward to going to sleep at night because my dreams are so entertaining. That is true. You could actually have that happen. I've actually woken myself up in the middle of the night laughing because I was dreaming something. More than I've done that more than once. Woke myself up by laughing. Woke myself right out of a dream. And you can do that too. So dreams are very entertaining, wonderful things to experience. They're part of your life. We do it every day. And um, just being aware of it, recognizing it, and stop talking yourself into thinking, I don't remember my dreams. Tell yourself at night you do. Read tarot cards, get creative, get a certain time of the day when you have time in, during the day, like on days off, where you can do something different than what you usually do in your routine. Get out of a different routine. Get into a, something doing different. And just time to think by yourself. Spend more time in here instead of out there interacting with others. That's all left brain. Get in here and think about things that you don't usually think about. And your intuition will come. Don't force it. It'll come to you. And tarot does exercise that part of the mind. By the way, I hope you like this. Keep throwing cards. We'll talk soon. Bye.